This was the day that a displaced people finally came home. After more than 50 years as refugees in their own country, the Maralinga Jaratu people were given back their ancestral land in a formal handover ceremony. They once again own an area twice the size of Greater London, which Australia allowed to become Britain's nuclear playground. Maralinga means place of thunder, and during one 13-month period in the mid-50s, the earth trembled as seven atomic bombs were detonated on the ground or dropped from the air. I think what the British done, because we had no rights in those days, no rights, we, I think what the British done was bad. I think they trespassed the land. When you go into someone else's property, you're trespassing. You're breaking the law. The British High Commissioner was invited to this ceremony, but sent her apologies. And Britain's role here has often been criticised. Lawyer Andrew Collett has been representing the Aboriginal people for 25 years. It does not reflect well on Britain the way that uh, uh, this whole thing was handled. It was a, a poor attitude after what must now be seen as environmental vandalism to blow up plutonium and spread it across this land and then um, have to uh, let Aboriginal people literally pick up the pieces uh, was, was an utterly inappropriate way to behave. The Ministry of Defence attempted to clean up the site in an operation codenamed Brumby in 1967. The test showed the continued presence of large amounts of plutonium and in 1993 the British government was eventually pressured into providing a further 20 million pounds to do the job properly. Instead of the topsoil simply being turned over to dilute it, it was buried in 15 meter deep trenches. Even so, the fallout from the Maralinga nuclear tests isn't finished yet. Hundreds of British and Australian servicemen who witnessed the blasts, many of whom were ordered to exercise on freshly radioactive land, are still fighting for compensation through the High Court in London. With the government resisting, the legal battle could go on for years. And even after the clean-up, 70 square miles of this land is still considered too dangerous to allow people to live on it. We wouldn't do it today, um, and I hope we've learnt from this. But I don't think we serve a lot of uh, purpose by trying to go back into the past. Um, we've rectified the wrong now and we need to march on. But the Aboriginal flag is flying once again. The place of thunder has been silent for 50 years, but the echoes of the past still reverberate around the world. Ian Woods, Sky News, Maralinga, South Australia.